Hi, it is Max here. You may already know me from my streams that I do every week on Monday through Twitch. But if you don't, that's fine. Please check the link that I have put in the description below. And maybe I'll see you one of those Mondays. I am a game developer currently working on the game Gaia, which is about my daughter by the same name. And it also focuses heavily on accessibility. So, if you like that sort of thing, please, I would really like it if you could consider giving me a follow. First things first, here we have the most empty project that you can have in Unity. It has nothing, not even a scene, I removed it. But it does the job for what we are about to do. If you are like me, you have a default thing that you always do whenever you create a new c -sharp file for Unity. Basically, you will have to right-click uh, your script folder, which we don't have here, so let me create that first for just purposes of doing everything here. Usually I call it scripts, so I better rename it. I don't like to have it script. Scripts, you do right-click, create, c -sharp file, and let's call it test. I don't care what it's called, just to show a thing. And boom, there we go. We have ourselves our first c -sharp script. Lovely. Now, let's have a look at what we just created, right? So here we have the basic layout of a C-sharp script in Unity. We have our using statements, as you see right here. Um, we have a class called test, which derives from mono behavior. And if this is your first Unity script that you probably might not know what that is, it's basically a big script that uh, allows for a lot of basic functionality that comes from the Unity engine. Then inside this class, we have two methods that are part of these Unity specific functionalities. We have a start method, which is called whenever the script gets executed the first time. And we have an update method, which is updated every once per frame. <clears throat> As a programmer, I usually am not too fond of comments that don't really add something for me. So that's the first thing I would definitely remove because it doesn't add anything. It's the same every time and I know that by now. Next, if we look at the top, we see that a few of those using statements are grayed out. Now, why are they grayed out? You may wonder. That is because by default, those are not used. If they are not needed, unless you start going into more uh, specific, uh, uh, not even Unity specific uh, code, but more C sharp specific code. If you're going to work with lists or stuff like that. Until you use that, you will not need these. So they are going to go. So next, there are these two methods out there that we talked about before the start and the update method. When I look at most of the projects that I've been working on, there's absolutely nothing that I use start for. Well, maybe once every 10 times. So yeah, that's not so hard. I will remove it. And you know what? You might wonder one day I will need it. Not so hard. You just try to start autocomplete. You got it again. Not such a big mess. And then there's the update. This is called once every frame. Now, you could argue that you might need that, and in that case, please leave it where it is. But like me, I usually use fixed update instead. So I would remove this altogether as well. So there you go. And then I have finally got my class where I want it to be. So if you look at that, that was quite a few steps that we had to take to do the things that we really wanted, right? So now I'm a quite a lazy fellow. Maybe that's because I'm a programmer and we're supposed to be lazy. Otherwise, we do the same thing over and over. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a big uh, fan of doing things twice. Uh, I like to keep things dry, as they call it. And to keep things dry, which means don't repeat yourself, I don't want to have to do this every time. So what can we do to make sure that I don't have to do this every single time? It's not that hard, really. Let me show you. We have our um, program files. We go to Unity. Mind you, not do not go to Unity Hub. It's also here. It's not the same. Um, 
it's just for the program Unity Hub, it's not what you need. So you go to Unity Hub Editor, you pick your Unity version, in this case I know that this is a Unity, what was it, 22, let me have a look, just a quick look, you can always see that in the top, if you don't know then you just look here. So it's a 2022.3.5, right? So we go to 2022.3.5.1. Then we have an editor folder. In that editor folder, there's a data folder and there's a resources folder. Then there's finally the one that we need, script templates. Now, if you look at this one, here you go. We have a text file called newbehaviorscript.cs. So let's open this up. And this is a notepad, so this is not gonna work. So let me do that again. That was a bit stupid. So I'm gonna open that instead with Visual Studio Code. So, as you probably remember, this is more or less the structure that we saw before. And there's a few things that we should notice here. First of all, of course, we have our usings. We don't wanna use those, so we can already remove them. Again, same thing for this inside here. We didn't want to comment, we didn't want to start, we didn't want to update, so we can remove all of that. It's starting to become a little bit more clean, right? But then there's that one thing that we didn't talk about yet. And that's the root namespace begin. And the root namespace end. Now what is that? Um, namespaces are pretty important. Uh, something that you might not know about yet, but they're a way to structure your program a little better. And uh, to have namespaces, make sure you can have different, ex um, different DLLs for every part of your code. So if you group things logically together by using a different namespace, that will make the game and the logic that you have behind it a lot easier to read. So let's have a look in Unity what we can do with that before we saved it. So let's go to edit, go to your project settings, then to editor, I'm already there. Then you scroll a little bit down and you have here the field root namespace. Now for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, I'm not gonna go too deep into that. All I wanna do is basically show you guys that you should fill that. And I'm gonna fill it with the name of course of Dragon Spirit Games. And now we can just click that away. It's going to be automatically saved. Okay, so what would that do? That would mean that now every script that we do will get encapsulated with a namespace. And that makes it a lot easier to read in the end. So without further ado, let me save this. Close this. We go back into Unity. And let's create a new script create C-sharp script, and we shall call it test2. Not very creative. I normally would never do that, but let's do it. We can already see in the side view that this is much better, but let's open it up in Visual Studio. So this is now what you get out of this um, script template. So that's an easy way for you to make sure you don't have to do this every time. And it's just one thing that you have to know, this is editor specific, so if you have another version of the editor, you will have to do this work again. But that's all. So thank you for watching, I hope you liked that, and if you want to see more tutorials like this, or you would like to see other videos of me, please let me know in the comments below, and uh, yeah, just consider dropping me a follow or subscribe. Thank you!